Hello fellow plot questers, today we've got an update to the Keeper of the Lost City series, the ninth book in the series, Stellar Loon. Oh, that was Stellar Loon by Shannon Messenger. And well, let's get right into it. So, I'll talk about the general plot, then talk about the stuff that I really liked, which include um, authoring techniques and prose and general characterization. Okay, let's get right into it. So, let's start with the plot. So, it starts off right after the end of book 8. Basically, you know, Sophie went ahead and burned down a never-seen facility. And because of that, there is some conflict within the group. Indeed, they believe that because of that, the never-seen will want to retaliate, and now they are all in danger. And she, they believe that Sophie made the wrong call. Meanwhile, Sophie is getting sick and tired of losing. She believes that it is because of all of this arguing, all of these formalities with the council and with her groupmates is the main reason why they were always one step behind from the never seen. Because of this, Sophie decided to put on a completely new attitude, a charismatic, more forceful, more sassy one in order to get things done. Meanwhile, Keith has also ran away because of the last book and left a message in the notes saying that, well, she loves Sophie. And Sophie, meanwhile, is kind of had that little bit of a mental turmoil there, but not a lot of it is, you know, actually going on. Meanwhile, because of Keith running away and Fitz, right? You know how Fitz and Sophie didn't really work out? Well, apparently Fitz still likes Sophie and completely assumes that Sophie likes him back. And... And because of a couple of things he said wrong, as in he basically t called Sophie a bad leader, or as in he believed that he couldn't trust her, Sophie was just really angry about that. And although they're cognates, which is kind of like telepathy partners that boost each other's energies, they can't trust each other anymore. So their mentor, Tiergen, tells them to do a cognate inquisition, inquisition, which is a technique that cognates use to, uh, to heal a broken bond between two cognates and they tried doing that and i thought that concept was really interesting but i'll go more into detail of that in the stuff that i really liked section then as they search for clues they come upon one word elysian as in the greek myth the elysian fields which stands for paradise but apparently elysian is something else something that our dear friend gisela or the main bad guy and keith's mother needs something needs a third element to what she calls Stellar Loon, or the project that she has been working on in order to accomplish Keith's legacy, whatever that means. And basically, what she wants is at that location, Elysian. And Elysian is apparently super, super hidden. After looking through the cache, or the secret compartments where the, elf, the elven counselors store their memories in, in order to not break their own sanities, uh, they look through one of the caches. And this is the cache of Kendrick, the dead counselor and O'Reilly's could-be husband. Oh, he died, by the way. And they look through his memories and they realize that he went to this place, this mysterious place that no one had any access to. And he had walked for a very long time to find it. And it was surrounded by a river that seemed muffled by sound. Like, imagine a roaring river, right? You would hear it, it would be very, very loud. It would be like a roaring waterfall. But... In this place, it sounded more like a stream, and it was strange, and the entire place, it almost felt like it had a conscious. What the heck is going on? No one knows, man. So we have a bit of an issue here. And Sophie also finds this strange symbol of five rivers intersecting around a central point within um, Kendrick's catch as well as an image. And Sophie realizes that this means this is the sign of Elysian. And Elysian then must be a place, the place where five rivers meet, the place that Kendrick went with O'Reilly in the memory of the Kash that they could feel some sort of awareness, a presence, an unsettling feeling. Yeah. And because of that, Sophie, you know, they try to find the place and they do a lot of investigating and eventually they come to a couple of realizations about Elysian. However, Vespera, who has apparently now taken over the Never Seen instead of Lady Gisela, comes up and offers an alliance. She believes that Lady Gisela is a bigger threat to both of their groups. Team Valiant, who's on the side of the good, and in Team Never Seen, they both want to stop Gisela, and she believes that they should make a temporary alliance. Because what lies there in Elysian is something that could absorb the seventh element. The seventh element being, of course, Something that is apparently nameless, something that combines different elements. 
The elements that we have seen, the special elements that we have seen so far will be quintessence, which is true light, and shadow flux, which is true darkness. Now we're having this new powerful element introduced, and now we know that probably what Gisela is looking for is that element, that thing that could complete Keef's legacy, or achieve his true potential. We don't know what that means yet. And so and Sophie and in that meeting with Vespera, Vespera and his her her minions, uh, we realized that oh sh crap, Lady Gisela can actually track down Keith at any time because they put a sh little shadow tracker echo thing in his heart. I'm not going to explain that. So they go ahead, go to the Lost Cities. They've managed to find Keith, get the tracker out of him, and they bring him back. And this is when actually the long-awaited foster Keith relationship works out. They manage to work out their differences and they start a relationship and they kiss, which is great. It's the first romantic kiss that Sophie has ever had in the series. It's a great character development. And then they go there alone because they don't really trust Vespera, which is fair considering she's a mass homicidal murderer. They go over there. Uh, they find nothing because, you know, Vespera said that she put her delusions over that in the order of the council in order to in order to hide that quarry of rocks that can absorb the seventh element, whatever that may be. And so they have no choice but to go with Vespera alongside their entire team of Team Valiant, and they go over there, they go inside, and Vespera dies because Lady Gisela is waiting there like, ha ha! And they kind of, it kind of ends off with the, have them having an epic fight scene, and this lady in these mysterious grey robes showing up and saying, I am Elysian. And this is where it ends up. A nice old classic Keeper of the Lost Cities cliffhanger. This is why we love and hate Shannon Messenger. Now, let's talk about the stuff that I really, really like. First off, Sophie dating Keith. I mean, the fact is, that was kind of like my number one ship from like book one. But it's also the fact that um, it's done so well. In Sophie and uh, Fitz's cognate, cognate in Inquisition, in their first step, they need to ask each other questions and watch each other's mental reactions within their subconscious, and they do that. And um, Sophie says her name and about herself, and he see, she sees what um, Fitz is thinking, and Fitz has this perfect, too perfect, pressuring image of her, and, and it's really kind of scary to her, right? Like, she's wanted Fitz for all this time, but she didn't know that Fitz had such high expectations of her. But then we see later on in the book, Keith's image of Sophie that was drawn in his sketchbook, and we know Keith's a good drawer. And we see this messy, slightly messy, slightly insecure looking, slightly fidgety Sophie. And we realize that Keith has an objective image of Sophie, a non-idealized image that he didn't make up that was just Sophie, and he loved Sophie for who she was. Meanwhile, Fitz had this idealized image of her and didn't love her what she was, but for what he thought she was or what he believed she was. And that was a lot of pressure. And the fact that Keith and Sophie works out like that, I think, is beautiful, beautifully executed. And I also want to talk about Sophie's character development, not just because she got an attitude, because I've, I've realized now, kind of, after a while, why the Elven Council and Team Valiant loses all the time because they can't make hard calls. A leader, um, uh, as Jordan Peterson, a um, professor in psychology once said, a hero always needs to be a monster because a, a true virtuous person, a true hero would keep their darkness at bay while using their virtue as their guidance, as the thing that guides them um, ultimately. However, they need to have darkness within them because if they don't have darkness within them, they're helpless. You can't predict what the bad guys aren't going to do if you are you aren't like them even the tiny bit. That's why Harry Potter is a rule breaker. That's why there's some evil in every heroes that they conquer. Because if they have an evil within them, then evil can't possibly surprise them. It cannot shock them. This is, what hap that's, this is what's happening with the Elven Council and Team Valiant. Because they're so purely good that they just can't imagine the atrocities that... Um, that never that, that the never seen would commit and all the crimes that they would commit they just can't imagine it they're helpless against the attacks we know that the counselors are actually really powerful old elves we know that they have awesome powers however apparently they're just too busy trying to keep the status quo they're too afraid they're too good they're too complacent they're like rabbits waiting to get destroyed by a predator and because they don't have that predator instinct within them or the monster as jordan peterson calls it 
uh, we're helpless to attacks and we're always one step behind because we're always talking about defense, not offense, because defense comes after offense. Ever heard of the term, the best defense is a strong offense? Well, this applies here, except they aren't doing it. And the fact that Sophie realized that and just sick of it, and the fact that the PTSD and all of her past failures that built up to the, her becoming this charismatic leader, this this strong, powerful, charismatic individual who knows what she's doing and isn't diving headfirst into situations but still asking quickly, rationally, and logically, and wielding her team around her perfectly, I thought that was just chef's kiss. It was amazing. The descriptions, I think I talk about Keeper of the Lost City descriptions every single time I review one of these books because they are really good, but I'll look at them in a more writery perspective this time. So, uh, the power usage, right? The when they use their powers, like for example, when Sophie uses her infliction, the thing where she can make people feel pain or happiness. Well, apparently, well, I myself, I'm working on my book, right? And one something that I have trouble is trouble with is really grounding down the magic scenes, because obviously magic doesn't really exist in real life, so it's hard to really express what that what that looks like, what that feels like, even if you're the best description writer in the world, which I certainly am not. However, how Shannon Messenger does this is just genius. She grounds the details by making making sure that we, the readers, can feel it. For example, when Sophie's using infliction, Sophie, uh, the descriptions are something like Sophie gathered a ball of just fury and rage, thinking about all the bad things that the Never Seen had ever done to her, and channeled it at her palms and fingertips, and let it flow out in these black, reddish-black lightning bolts. And we can just visualize it, and it's amazing. And you can feel it, and it's so grounded, that's why it's so cool, that's why the Keeper of the Lost City stuff, even though a lot of the powers aren't like super super original, feels really cool and really original, because we get this really solid feeling, this feeling we can tell, we can imagine what Sophie feels like when she uses her powers, and that just grounds the world even more. And of course, I cannot go over this without talking about the cognitive training and the telepathy description stuff because that stuff is just genius when they go into the subconscious when when she describes it as you know shadow becomes light light becomes shadow up becomes down and down becomes up and nothing matters and and how they describe the telepathic scenes it's just oh my god my head's just gonna explode just thinking about it because it's just so so well done and in general, the plot was incredibly gripping, very, very satisfying, although we we have a cliffhanger. Classic Shannon Messenger, but, you know, we gotta deal with it as the readers, because her books are good. And, yeah, that's about it for the stuff I really, really like. The stuff I didn't like, and... I mean, there were a lot of scenes where we kind of cut down on the description and just went with, like, like four pages of dialogue. But I think that still works because of our writing style and because we've known these characters for nine books now so we don't have to be told every time what they sound like because we have this pretty strong visual in our head so I feel like that's just um, a her using the medium well her context of this book very very well and I just thought that it was an overall amazing amazing book easy easy 10 out of 10 I mean obviously I could say you know oh, descriptions are lacking because um, there there isn't much or or stuff like that, but I honestly can't say that because again, I feel like she did really well with her techniques, her style, her prose, and I just thought it was really amazing and it really, really worked together. It's really inspiring. And like always, your plot coaster and the block coaster, I highly recommend the Keeper of the Lost City series. It's really, really good. And the classic, just this mystery structure, it's, it's like Harry Potter. If the plot twists were like a million times more complicated and harder to execute. It's just true, and it's just great, so would highly recommend. Have a great day, everyone. Plot Cluster.